And then finally, we'll discuss a very common condition called melasma. Melasma has to do with hormones, um, genetics, as well as sun exposure, resulting in these brown patches that start out on the cheek but can spread throughout the face. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fundamentals with Dr. Adobe Obasi. I'm a physician scientist board certified in dermatology and dermatopathology. In this video, I want to discuss how brown patches and spots on the skin can worsen in the sun. Right now is summertime in a lot of areas in the world, as such there's a lot of activities such as going to the beach, hiking, traveling, and therefore a lot of sun exposure. I plan on discussing this topic in two parts. The first part will be introducing important concepts about the skin structure and about sunlight to better explain how the sun can make brown patches on the skin worsen. Please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell as well as the like button, and I look forward to reading your comments below. Brown patches are sometimes referred in dermatology as hyperpigmented patches. The hyperpigmentation is due to excessive color being made in the top layer of the skin called the epidermis. I'll first delve into the skin structure as well as discuss a little bit of photobiology which is a discussion about sunlight and then finally I will talk about three conditions of the skin of the face that are due to brown spots or patches. The first is the solar lentigos or pluralist solar lentigenes they are also called sunspots, or age spots, or liver spots. It really doesn't have anything to do with the liver. It's probably an old wise tale. Then the second condition is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This, these are brown patches or spots that occur after inflammation or irritation of the skin, such as due to rashes, acne, um, scratches, burns, things like that. And then finally, we'll discuss a very common condition called melasma. Melasma has to do with hormones, um, genetics, as well as sun exposure, resulting in these brown patches that start out on the cheek but can spread throughout the face. We'll go into more details in each of these conditions. But first, part one of this topic is to discuss about the skin structure, about sunlight, and then about how they can interact to cause brown patches on the face. Photo refers to light. Light is a type of energy wave that are packaged into small packets called photons. These light waves go up and down like the waves of the ocean or water, what we call the sine wave. The sine wave, the peak of the wave, and the distance between the peaks are called wavelengths. And that determines one of the many characteristics of light, as is relevant to this talk. Sound is a different type of energy that emits a different type of waveform. Comment below if you know the waveform that sound waves make. The first correct answer will win a free derm layer mineral sunscreen. There's a clue in the image above. The sun emits or sends out a wide range of energy and light. The light that we see is called the visible light spectrum that contains the colors of the rainbow that we are well familiar with. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, or as I learned in the mnemonic, Roy G. Bibb. The different colors are different because of the wavelength I previously described. And so the sun emits energies adjacent to the visible light spectrum. So there are some energies that are shorter wavelengths and some energies that are longer wavelengths. 
In the image below, you may notice other energies that we're familiar with in our day-to-day -day lives, such as microwaves. So the sun emits the visible light spectrum, as well as ultraviolet and infrared light waves and other waves beyond those. For the purpose of this talk, I'll be focusing on the ultraviolet spectrum as well as the visible light spectrum. The ultraviolet light spectrum are divided into three main waveforms. There's ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, and ultraviolet C. For the most part, ultraviolet C really doesn't reach the Earth's surface because it's blocked by the atmosphere, by the ozone layer. Although there is a hole in the ozone layer that keeps expanding, so we may see more side effects of ultraviolet C. Ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B can activate the pigment-making cells in the skin called melanocytes and can result in darkening of the skin, also known as tanning. There are other effects of ultraviolet light that can be either positive or negative. On the positive end, you have vitamin D formation, anti-inflammatory effects, um, as well as, for some people, some faint darkening of the skin or tanning. On the other spectrum, you have skin cancer formation, accelerated aging of the skin, and sunburns. Ultraviolet light can damage DNA. And what it does is cause the DNA molecules to fuse together. Thereby, when they're being copied for the cells to divide, the copy becomes inaccurate and introduces a mutation. This happens very frequently, but thankfully we have a very robust repair mechanism to handle this. However, unfortunately, that repair mechanism gets less efficient as we get older. DNA replication in the skin happens at the top layer of the skin called the epidermis. And the top layer of skin is organized into specific structures, which I'll go into in a moment. The skin structure in general is divided into three main layers. There's the epidermis, which is the topmost layer. There's the dermis, which is the second layer. And the dermis contains a lot of what we call the skin appendages, like the hair follicle, the oil glands, the nerves, the blood vessels. And that's where a lot of the collagen is formed and used. The last layer of skin is called the subcutaneous fat. That's a fatty layer that cushions the skin and helps in temperature regulation. For the purposes of this talk, I'm going to focus only on the top layer of skin, which is called the epidermis. And in future videos, we'll delve more into conditions that arise from disorders in the other layers. So the epidermis is divided into five layers. Layers are otherwise called stratum or strata in plural form. The bottommost layer of the epidermis is the layer where the DNA replicates the most because it's the area of the skin or the epidermis where the cells multiply very frequently to replenish the skin. The bottommost layer of the skin epidermis is called the basal layer, otherwise known as the stratum basale. The stratum basale contains cells of the skin called keratinocytes. And keratinocytes at the basal layer constantly copy themselves and therefore need to constantly copy DNA. They're very critical because any damage to these cells can result in mistakes in that DNA replication. There are other specialized cells at the bottomless layer of the epidermis that are not keratinocytes. These cells include the melanocytes, which I alluded to earlier, or I mentioned earlier. The melanocytes are the pigment-making cells of the skin, and they reside at the basal layer and extend little tentacles, what we call dendrites, to different keratinocytes, especially at the basal layer, and produce pigment that protect the skin of the epidermis from damaging sun rays. The other cell that is in the basal layer is called the Merkel cell, and that is involved in nerve transmission of the skin. The keratinocytes, as they copy themselves, eventually get triggered to mature or differentiate. The next level of maturation from the basal layer is to form the spinous layer. The spinous layer is called that because the keratinocytes produce a very special protein called desmosomes, that are little spines that connect or interlock adjacent keratinocytes together to form a barrier. These 
spinous keratinocytes or the stratum spinosum cells further mature and start to make little granules. Granules are collections of chemicals and molecules. In this case, they're forming what will end up being important for the last layer of mat maturation, which are effectively the glue between the cells when they become finally mature. So the granular layer is called the stratum granulosum, and it's so named because it's making these granules of proteins and lipids and other molecules to help with the skin barrier. Finally, we have the stratum corneum. The corneal layer is the terminal differentiation or the final maturation stage of the keratinocyte. And what they effectively become is they lose their um, nuclei and the DNA and just become sacs of keratin, which is a protein made by the keratinocytes, as well as form glues between these sacs to form a nice waterproof, for the most part, barrier. So keratinocytes are so named because they make a protein called keratin. Melanocytes are so named because they're cells that make a pigment called melanin. So that will help us as we go through further discussions. There are two types of melanin made by the melanocytes in the skin. There's pheomelanin, which happens to be red-orange, and then there's eumelanin, which happens to be brown-black. These are one of many fun skintacular facts that you'll find in my children's book called Skintacular Facts, fun facts from a dermatologist. So the proportion that any individual has of the pheomelanin and the eumelanin determines their skin tone. So Dr. Fitzpatrick, a pioneering dermatologist, described the six different skin types, ranging from skin type one to skin type six. They predominantly were described based on the ability to tan or burn, and in some cases correlated with the amount of melanin in the skin, specifically the amount of eumelanin in the skin. So skin type one and two tend to be fair skin and tend to have more pheomelanin compared to eumelanin versus skin type five and six, which tend to be darker skin types and tend to have more eumelanin than pheomelanin. Eumelanin is most effective in protecting the skin cells, the keratinocytes from the ultraviolet light DNA damage. So under the microscope, I see in darker skin types more easily little caps of melanin above the basal layer, protecting the basal keratinocytes and other important cells at the bottommost part of the epidermis because they are very critical and damage to their DNA can result in very aggressive skin cancers. So the basal layer of the skin has a basal keratinocyte where DNA damage can occur and result in cancers such as the basal cell cancer and the squamous cell cancer. Damage to the melanocyte DNA can result in different brown spots in the skin and when it becomes cancerous can result in a cancer that is pretty aggressive called melanoma. There are different types of melanoma which is something that I'll discuss later. So to summarize, we have learned that the sun emits or sends out a variety of energy light waveforms including what we see, the visible light spectrum, and although we can't see them, we still experience ultraviolet light effects. The ultraviolet light can damage DNA, but also has some positive um, effects on the skin. The damage to DNA can result in a variety of features on the skin, including some spots on the skin, as well as cancers on the skin. Whenever we talk about sun exposure, we always have to balance the good and the bad. So there's no absolute answer when it comes to um, sun exposure other than try to avoid excessive sun exposure so that it doesn't result in an excessive um, negative effect on your skin. That's why sunscreen and sun protection is very important, especially when the sun rays and the ultraviolet light rays are at their peak during the day. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to discuss the three conditions I mentioned in the beginning, which are sunspots, the solar lentigos, also known as age spots or liver spots, melasma, which is related to hormones, sun exposure and genetics, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation.
which happens to be brown spots that occur after the skin gets irritated or inflamed. I look forward to delving more into those topics in the next part of this video, but understanding what normal is and some effects of the sunlight will best enable you to understand these um, features of the skin. Thank you for your attention to this video. You are all fundamentally awesome. Please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell as well as the like button and leave a comment below on this topic or any topic you would want me to discuss. I hope you have a wonderful day and God bless.